So today's Wednesday and we've got an unusual set here. Somebody we did, a, an end user we did, a um, oh, what was it, D'Amico Convoy for early in the year. Um, he's sent this and he sent another radio which actually isn't um, a UK approved set so that can't be done anything with. But um, this one he's kindly sent and we don't see many of these. I think I've covered it once before. It's the Harry Moss... 325. If I remember the number right. Yeah, 325. Looks very similar to a Uniden, doesn't it? And you've got the three pin connector on the back, also similar to a Uniden. It's come with no screws. And uh, did I say it was from his late father's estate? So it would be nice to do something with it. So, I better unscrew, unscrew, unsolder the speaker. They're not as nicely made as some sets. In fact, I would suggest it's actually hand soldered rather than flow soldered. You know what? It's had work around the synthesizer which in this case is the LC7136, which is the fatter package version of the Sanyo LC7137. Oh no, it's not that chip. No, I'm lying. It's had work with the ribbon cable between there and the front panel. But it's had so many dry joints resoldered, I think we will start. with defluxing it. So get the isopropyl alcohol out when we're not using it for cleaning records. And then we'll need to make a microphone up for this set because it's uh, can't remember what they are offhand, but I'll look at my handy list. But we may as well start doing this because if there's going to be any fault, I won't be able to see it. I won't be able to see where I'm soldering with a board in this state of flux. And this only takes about five minutes to dry, so whilst I make a microphone up this can be sat here drying I could do a bucket load of new sets we've got quite a few new sets but um I think most people prefer to watch me actually men sets that have come in a scrap. Um, somebody asked, have we done the Intec 520 handheld? And the answer is, I would if I could get one. Somebody's painted this black. It's supposed to be silver. How bizarre. <laughs> so this outer rim, shall we say, is normally silver. That's probably why they've had the ribbon cable out to 
turn it into a black one. How strange. Hmm. So what we do have is the standard three pin power lead. So that's pretty easy to hook up to the power supply. We've got a couple of these charts. I don't know whether this came from Knights or what, but uh, what does, it, does this say? Harry Moss. It's standard, what you call standard cybernet. So I'm going to pause the video. We'll dig a mic out. Okay, so I had a circuit diagram, so I looked at that and uh, I've been able to make up a chart to do this. Hopefully. I'm sure we've done one before, but there wasn't a chart in the file, so I don't know. Not bothered, don't mind, we can do it again. Right, so we'll plug in and plug the. Of course, we don't know whether it works as a so an estate. Um, radio so you know it may work it may not work uh, you know it might have been slung in the corner as a non-worker I don't know so um, always makes it interesting when you're not quite sure strange about that front though so it wants to be in for that and the pass by needs to be on it was last on 18 and there we are on channel 20 Nice um, pale blue meter, pale bluey green, a bit like the Midland Precision series, and uh, with a black needle, you can actually see that. So we're going to transmit, and the radio isn't going in to transmit. That's interesting, isn't it? So have we got receive, or is our microphone chart lying? So we've got a hiss on receive, so the microphone must be right. So we'll put the signal generator on, and we'll just see whether we can get a tone. Yes, I can hear that coming in as we come on to frequency. I've got an S9 signal on the signal generator. Sounds a bit strangled. Another sticky meter set. I think all sticky meters nowadays. Yeah. I'm loath to take them apart because unless the scale's catching, which it isn't, you can end up now with the what bearings there are in these to be, uh, I think the phrase is knackered. Anyway, it doesn't kill the transmit and there, there is no reaction from going into transmit. There's no public address facility, so it's not like it's inadvertently got switched to the wrong mode. We'll just double check with our chart. Harry Moss number one, Harry Moss number one, well, there we are. I might, if I don't get anywhere, I've checked with the circuit diagram, but the fact this received, there's only the audio and the um, and the transmit, which uh, could be wrong way around, and it would still 
kind of work. So I wonder what's happening there. Now it's even more interesting because it's stopped receiving. <laughs> Dry joints, isn't there? Anyway, I'll pause the video and we'll have a look. Okay, so I've got to the bottom of it. I did find a couple of dry joints which all helped, but in fact, the microphone chart was lying. So I'll show you that. I got the circuit diagram out and the microphone unit is shown there and so I've written that out to the pin numbers this is the wrong way on to usual but pin 1 is ground, pin 2 is audio, pin 3 is transmit and pin 4 is receive well the standard cybernet mic, ground and audio the other way around and transmit and receive the other way around so no wonder we're not getting anywhere so having said that the compiler of the microphone chart uh, they may well have seen a Harry Moss version of the Interceptor TC300, in which case that could well be the microphone they say. So I'm not saying it's it's wrong, wrong, but not this particular model. So hopefully let's go into picture in picture, um, and we might have to get up to see this one because. Now I've got a, a LCD monitor instead of a, a CRT monitor. I can't see all the detail because I'm at an angle. But I can't see any CRT market, um, monitors on the market which have got an AD, HDMI socket on them. So it's a bit of a snag. Right. Um, in fact, it's a come down, isn't it? To come down from a you know, thousand quid Sony monitor to come down to an £89.99 Lenovo thing which has come out of Argos. Right, transmit. Go on to high power. Oh, we're in audio there. Um, it's doing 2.8 watts. Nothing new there, is there? So, there you are. That That is number one problem. And I, I don't know whether... I say we don't know whether this is supposed to work or whether it was discarded I've done a couple of corker dry joints on it I really have um, and they're actually in the transmit section so at least with doing that defluxing I was able to spot those while I was just looking for dry joints so we'll start with the transmit chain and we've got um, uh, 604 which we're not going to touch because it's going to be the VCO I would think uh, we're not, I'm not going to touch these. Have got these are wax sealed. I don't need to touch these. It's doing enough power for me to be further into the circuit. So we'll just um, see if we can do 602, and that's the driver. I gain point something of a something. I just noticed it's off frequency, which is not surprising at the age. I think these were 1982. Uh, so I'll just move the camera across so we can all see the frequency counter. Trimmer capacitor is a nice quality one actually down there. Oh, we're going down. We always go the wrong way. This time it's clockwise for up. Tomorrow it'll be clockwise for down. We'll leave it at that. That's near enough. 
So it wasn't out of spec wrong, but it wanted pulling up. So I thought, well, while we're tuning the radio, I will do that first. It's a sensible way to do it. We'll just move the camera back. So my next one to do will be 601. I think that's a hex, it doesn't fit in, so perhaps it's the one with the green. It feels like a slot. Let's try the yellow tool. No. Well, that would fit in there if it was slackened off. We'll skip that and uh, move to that one. I don't know what's happening. This next one, six o. Oh, uh, 303 is broken. back to the one was struggling. Hello Mr Chippy. <laughs> Mr Chippy has joined me in the room and he's completing my phrases. He wanted to know whether he was uh, we're going to be doing an on the air test. I said well, give me 10 minutes. So we'll go to I'll go to the phosphor bronze tool, see if that fits. And the answer is yes, it does. And look at that making all the difference. So that's three and a half now. So we'll just back check on this one. Because they are interactive, as I've said a million times before. And then we have a trimmer capacitor here. Anyway, we managed to get three and a half watts out of it, so it's not too scary. So on low power, we should have 0.4 of a watt, and at the moment we're doing 1.1, so that's not right. Now that is, um, I looked at the circuit, I've worked all these out, so low power is RV5, RV5 is there, so it's there. In fact, it doesn't go lower. I wonder if it's dirty. really have the range so uh, that's uh, that's a bit high at one watt so um,
the transmit meter for what it's worth should be according to my chart RV4 and RV4 should be that one there Well, that's set that if the meter didn't stick. So, deviation next. Wallop. So, it's about 1.6, which is what you tend to expect. So, we think... RV3 is the deviation, which is down there. And it is. Wallow. Spot on 2.2 to a maximum of 2.5. Alright, that moves us over to receive. does sound strangled. So we'll move our camera over to the oscilloscope. For S9 signal equivalent of 100 microvolts on, we'll turn the volume up and I reckon from the circuit diagram that 505 is the detector which is that one there I can't say that was miles out okay so now we'll move over to the synad meter and I've borrowed the transformer it's 110 volt instrument for the Morse key that we did yesterday. So I'll need to go and recover the transformer. Right, well that's uh, sorted the transformer out. So we need to adjust the signal so that we're looking at about four decibels. And we'll start with 501 and we'll use the ceramic tool five oh two hey that's made a difference and it's already a very sensitive radio five oh three Five oh four, five oh five. We've already done because it's the detector. Right, so that's fine. So let's do the meter. So we'll go back to an S nine signal. that's reading full scale deflection and according to what I've worked out the meter should be RV2 RV2 is there now this is going to be fun isn't it because I've got to tap the meter
Look at that, I'm about there. <laughs> No, nope, that's too high. I'll tell you what, let's just see with, if it's the sellotape on the back that's causing the problem. Because it can be. I'll just switch it off a second. So because there's adhesive tape, I'll cut that there. We'll cut that one there. And Mr. Chippy's come back to see me. That was a hint, wasn't it? So, we've got a little sticky meter. I might just be able to help it along or make it worse. Which do you think it'll be, Mr. C? Who's gone? <laughs> Well, it swung into a position more readily with that removed and a bit of scraping around. Well, it's about where I want it to read, but it's the same old story. You've got all the heat from the lamp from 30-odd years of use. You've got the sellotape stickiness, which has migrated into the bearing. There's corrosion in that bearing. You know, do I prefer a sticky meter or a broken meter? So I think I prefer a sticky meter. It's funny we've had sticky meters in uh, consecutive sets. I don't often see them, to be honest. Uh, right, let's look at the squelch. And that should be very straightforward. Before we do that, we'll, we'll get a reading for the... Um, to see what the sensitivity is. There we go. So that's set it to 20 dog biscuits. So Harry Moss, PT325, 20 dB cyanide, 12 dB cyanide, which is the industry standard, 10 dB cyanide is the cheating one. And for 20 dB cyanide, I think we can all say that that is spot on it is doing hmm let's go on that scale it's actually doing 0 0.9 for 12 db cyanide we can change scales It's naught point. Whew. I'll say two nine five. You know, it's it's nearly three, but it isn't quite. And then for ten dB, 
it's 0 0.24 so there's nothing wrong with that and that came up quite well it was that second coil which was the big change that we found so squelch that brings us to the squelch so we'll part of the signal generator at 0 0.3 of a microvolt Look at the attenuator controls of the signal generator. So, RV1 is the squelch, which is the one in the corner. is isn't labelled RV1, but by process of elimination, surely it must be RV1 if we can actually get the tool in through the wiring. So let's see where it is. I'll tell you what, we'll see where the strongest is first. So I've got it on full squelch. Let's see where that is. So 0.3, well, that's no good at all. That's one microvolts. What a wishy washy squelch. So I'll turn it to full. We'll start from there. So one, three, ten, thirty, a hundred. Well, that's too strong. We want it to come in at a hundred. One of those is it. It had to be something, didn't it, to let the radio down? Well, it's got rather a wide hysteresis, but that's now 100 microvolts for for uh, full squelch. So let's see where it is at the sensitive end. So I'll switch the signal generator off. We're parked at 0 0.3 of a microvolt. Let's put the squelch to threshold. And switch the signal generator on, and in it comes. So let's get a fine reading. So it's coming in, the signal at threshold is coming in at three micro, uh, 0 0.3 of a microvolt. And it's going out at 2.1.21. So 0 0.3 and going off at 0 0.21. So that's a useful range. So it should be all right going around Scratchy Corner. So I'll put this radio back together, seeing as Mr. C is chasing it going for a drive. And... I had a comment which was interesting. You put the speaker lead on the wrong way around, uh, different to what it came out. Well, what, what's it matter? It's not stereo where they were in phase. What we'd do is we'd, I would normally put the coloured wire to the um, to the positive end of the speaker. But of course, I don't know how the thing's wired. I'm not going to bother looking either. As in, the circuit would show which is ground and which isn't. So we're going to put the coloured wire, which in this case is green, to positive. And we're going to put the black wire, which I would assume to be the negative end, to negative. But all that happens, if you get it the wrong way around, it makes absolutely no difference to the sound but the speaker moves inwards with the speech instead of outwards with the speech but in stereo that would be very very important that the two do the same so I don't really care an iota as to which way around it goes but I do try and get it the right way around especially when they're our sets these so I'll put the lid on we'll get some screws because if you remember this came without any screws and does the internal speaker work? No, the internal speaker doesn't work. Isn't that handy for it not to work?
strange. I wonder if we've got an iffy switch at the back of the uh, extension speaker socket. See if we can find some screws. And as luck would have it, we can. And then Mr. C can go for a drive. Uses the wrong screwdriver because it was handy. Ah, no, 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 no. These aren't fitting, so they've had bigger screws. It all needs re-threading by the looks of this. Yeah, that's got a damaged thread. Well, I'll come back to that. We're going to do the omni-air test so Mr. C can uh, do what he needs to do. And that's the door. I'm not sure why we would have the door at this time. Are you getting that, Mr. C? And it's the odd job man who comes on a Tuesday and Thursday who has uh, come for whatever reason. We'll find out in a moment. So just to hold it together, I'll put two screws in, but I'll sort that out at my leisure. Um, I'll close that up a bit and then we can re-thread it. And um, we'll just put it on the aerial. So let's see whether we can actually hear anyone so what time is it about eight seven o'clock bit of noise there bearing in mind we're seven miles from anything and 35 miles from the nearest city. 19 or Roger. Well, at least the meter didn't stick on that one. Right, we'll park it at 31. And we'll go straight into the on-the-air test. So thank you for watching the Harry Moss 325 from 1982.